Hey everybody. Um, gotta make a video uh, making a Christmas tree that I'm later going to carve that will look like this. Um, it's part of the donation rewards for the GoFundMe that I've created to uh, purchase a new kiln um, so that I can keep making pottery. A uh, kiln is a necessary uh, piece of equipment. So uh, the piece that I just showed you is a greenware piece, uh, which means that it is dried clay. It hasn't been fired, so the firing actually chemically changes the clay to where it can't absorb moisture. Uh, and then that's what makes it food safe, microwave safe, dishwasher safe. But at that stage, it's very fragile. Uh, it's basically this clay that is just air dried um, over the course of days. I also do give pottery throwing lessons for beginners. Um, this is a little intermediate. I'm gonna be throwing a Christmas tree, so it's a lot of, uh, a lot of choking the clay back in. Um, it's also a big cylinder which I did have a problem throwing for a while. Um, it is a little bit harder to throw a cylinder. It's basically necessary uh, for every piece of pottery, uh, plus maybe a bowl, or not a bowl, um, a plate, I'm sorry. So right now I'm coning up and down. Uh, this helps with centering. Um, Before, whenever I was working with the ball of clay, I was trying to center it as much as I could. This helps get it even more centered. It also forces air bubbles out the top so that you don't find an air bubble whenever you're trying to build the walls up later. And so then you cone up and cone down, and I'm doing that kind of like making a house roof out of my hands and pushing in on the bottom. I don't want to make the bottom any thinner than the top. Because uh, you want a good base on your pottery, and if you make the base too thin, uh, once you start pulling on the walls, you can't easily make the base thicker. So I think I'm done coning up and down, so I'm going to cone down one more time, and then I'm going to kind of make a hockey puck. So I'm just doing that, and I'm also locking my elbows uh, to make sure that my arms aren't just going willy-nilly all over the place. And like I said, you don't want this base area to be less than your body of clay. And a lot of people have problems pushing in on their pinkies when they're first starting out. I try to push in evenly with my hand um, and kind of just let my pinky rest on um, the bat, which is what this is that's attached to the wheel. It's actually a bat system. So it has like little removable bats. All right, so you basically have your hockey puck shape. Um, whenever you have your hockey puck shape, you do kind of want to think about what you're trying to make. I'm going to be trying to make something tall. So I'm leaving my hockey puck starting shape a little taller than if I was going to be making a plate or a bowl. I'm going to add a little bit of water. I know the angle is not really good on this. So my hand's probably in the way, but I'm basically just trying to start learning how to record videos. So thank you for your patience. Um, and I did want to make a video of me making a reward item for someone who did donate. Alright. So now I'm going to be pulling the walls up. And I've also gone all the way down to the bat. Because I leave my Christmas trees hollow and they don't have a bottom. So that does take one step out of compressing the bottom that I teach whenever I give my beginner lessons. So it's very important to compress the bottom. If you don't, you could get S-cracks later on and you it's not fun to open up the kiln and see a bunch of pieces with S-cracks in the very bottom of them. 
so you definitely want to compress the bottom then I was just cleaning out the extra clay that was in there um, now I'm going to choke it a little bit uh, choke it in and that's going to help me kind of keep my cylinder shape that I'm working for because I want this to be tall and have some height to it Right now I'm pulling up, so I'm uh, applying even pressure with my outside finger and my inside finger. And whenever they're inside, it kind of looks like it's like a little claw. Um, I basically don't use my thumb on the outside, it's kind of just for bracing. Uh, but I push in with kind of these three fingers, kind of leveled out, evened out, and then I push in on the outside with this finger. And I want it to be very steady pressure and to gently pull up. And I also am cleaning out the bottom and then adding more water back. Uh, if you don't have enough water on your clay while you're throwing it, it will create friction and uh, I might even do that. You might see it. So let's keep going. All right. So I'm going to pull up again and it's starting to get real wonky on me. So I am going to choke it. And try to even that back out and bring it back into more of a cylinder because it was going into kind of a bowl shape which it seems like everything wants to do so you kind of have to fight against the bowl that wants to come out of your clay the whole time and whenever you are pulling a cylinder that you want to be tall uh, you do need to be aware of where you're pushing with your hand and um, make sure that you're trying to push in other than bring it out and that kind of helps a little bit with everything wanting to turn into a bowl so now I'm pushing in more from the outside to keep that from going out and becoming wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And then again, I'm going to choke up the pottery, which does thicken the walls out, so then that also leaves room for me to go back in and make it taller. change the speed a little bit between pulling up and then choking in so okay so now I'm going to work on the top, I'm pretty happy with the thickness that I have at the base. Um, I made this little tool to get kind of water out of there. Haven't really perfected pulling with it, but we're going to try again. Okay, pretty happy with that. I'm going to choke it in again, try to get that Christmas tree to be real tall, modern, and skinny. I did it, sir. Alright. And I'm just going to pull again to refine the shape and get it a little bit closer to the top because I do want these pieces to meet up at a point for the shape that I want. And so Christmas trees do take a little bit of time, but it's just basically repeating two steps over and over again until you slowly get to the 
final shape that you want. And like I said, whenever you choke in, it gives the pottery, or it gives the clay more thickness. So whenever I choke it in the top, I'm making the walls thicker, and then I'm going back in and I'm thinning them out, and it's creating more height. And it's also giving me like an even thickness over the piece as well. This is probably going to be the last time that I try to pull this up. And then I'm going to choke it one last time and try to get the height that I want out of it. I got that little piece that comes off most of the time for making these. Okay. And now this next step still gives it a little bit more height, but this tree is not at the height that I want for my reward tree, so I will have to make another one. to smooth out and try to get the shape a little closer to what I want and always uh, trim this later for the shape that I want it to be. Just a couple final passes. Refining the shape. I'm actually pretty happy with the height that that gives it. Uh, that's the final step, because so once you close it up, the air that's in there really helps you to get it to the shape that you want it at. Right, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and like I said, it'll get carved. Uh, so I'll go in and uh, do some little carvings on this after it gets to a leather hard state. I know I'm blocking it right now, but I'm trying to wash my rinse my hands off. Okay. So yeah, once this uh, dries, probably overnight, uh, maybe two days because it's been raining today. Um, that's with like not covering it in plastic or anything. That will get carving work put on it. My hands off a little bit more. And we'll end up looking similar to this. This was my first one, so I'm hoping it looks a little bit more uniform than this one. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Um,